Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Ignalina and today I'm here with my fifth knitting podcast episode. I'm Lithuanian, currently living in Norway. I'm a software engineer. I live together with my fiancé and our two chinchillas. But let's talk about knitting. <laughs> so today I wear my Betnik sweater by Nora Kauhau. Uh, I will link it down below. Uh, I will link my Ravelry page too. You can find find all information about yarns, the needles I'm using. If I'm forgetting to mention something, uh, so yeah, I knitted this. Uh, I knitted all last summer this sweater. I think uh, it took me around four months. Of course, I was traveling a little bit, so it wasn't you know really continuous knitting <laughs> maybe. But yeah, it took a lot of, lot of time. I really love the this cable design. I think the design is stunning. But I overestimated how much the yarn would grow. I measured a little bit incorrectly from my another sweater because it had a little bit deeper yoke. So I measured from that how long sleeve is. So now the sleeves are way too short in my opinion. Even I think maybe bracelet length would be like this. Nice, beautiful. But when I don't do anything or just you know move around, it's just a little bit too much. And I was thinking, should I give it away? So I decided just to wear it and like see how actually it wears. So even if I it didn't give me enough maybe space or like uh, how does I forgot how it is called. Uh, <laughs> um, oh yes, positive ease. So I didn't give myself maybe a positive ease uh, for so it is really snug. But I enjoyed the snugness. I like uh, quite fitted me sometimes clothing. At least I don't think that is maybe too much. I really love wear. I loved wearing the sweater with one of my red dresses. I think the color match is really nice. And I wear this combination for my birthday in October. I wear it quite a lot. The sweater in December. It is like my Christmas sweater. So still, I like it, but in a way, I still feel like it is too small. And uh, maybe I will still keep it for this year, maybe this Christmas. But after that, I may give it away, maybe for, to my aunt or I don't know, donate it. Because it's just, I, I, yeah, I always, when I'm wearing it, I try to do like this, try to stretch it even more. But yeah, it's just, I have to admit that it was too, I think it's a little bit also too short. I want to, you know, also pull it down. So even if it is, uh, I quite like, you know, how much I know the width it is. It doesn't bother me that uh, if it is a little bit more stretched <laughs> uh, stitches or that it doesn't have any positive ease, maybe a little bit negative because when I was measuring it, I didn't know and I didn't thought that cables can stretch in a little bit of the fabric. So yeah, I, it is just too small and it was totally my fault. I selected too small a little size from the pattern, then I decided to knit shorter than it is otherwise. That I think I just calculated by row gauge I was expected to get. So yeah, it is too small by my fault, not the pattern. Pattern is amazing, <laughs> pattern is free. Um, and moving forward to my only finished project <laughs> and I have a little bit, uh, I don't know, story to tell. So this is uh, Frida. I think this is Frida uh, headband by Emily Louise. And I had this yarn left over from... Uh, I bought uh, a top pattern with yarn, with suggested <laughs> yarn amount, and I got left with almost... Uh, yeah, this is... So I have two full balls. I knitted this headband using uh, more than half a ball left from that pattern. And I was thinking maybe I should film uh, like a weekly or 10 days uh, vlog with, you know, using up scrap yarns. It would be like inspiration for people. What could they do with their scrap yarn? You know, I just, you know, do a little vlog style uh, knitting video because I thought that it would be a cozy <laughs> idea. And then it took me six days and I quite soon realized how much time this because I think it is fingered weight. I'm not good at uh, knowing who, which size or no weight category yarn is, but it is around 26-28 uh, stitches in 10 centimeters. So, and I was double knitted. This is double knitted headband, so it is 
yeah, both sides, <laughs> good size, and it takes time to double knit it because you have to slip every second stitch, so you just cannot uh, knit and not uh, look what you're doing. Uh, I love how it looks, you know, the fingering weight yarn, but it takes a lot of time. So yeah, you just have to relax, labor of love, and <laughs> while I was knitting it, it just looked uh, like my brothers. I have a lot, have brothers, <laughs> four. Uh, and one is from my mother's side, so I live with that little boy, and he's uh, maybe closest to me. And he was born when I was 11 years old, so I really well remember, you know, him being really little one, like one year old or two year old, and he had, you know, scarf. It was really similar, I don't know, a similar sized, uh, I don't know similar width, uh, and when I started knitting, I just, oh, maybe I should just knit few baby items from this yarn, because it is soft, and uh, it is called, it is, oh, I'm sorry, Vuvlevo Baby Merino uh, Wool, uh, it is 75% merino wool, 25% polyester, uh, so I was thinking, oh, maybe should I knit a few baby items, and then I understood nobody from my friends, no, nobody is planning on having babies, nobody is pregnant, I'm not pregnant, but my fiancé and me agreed that uh, well, we should wait while he will uh, finish his uh, PhD, he just started this year, so three more years <laughs> left, so we are not planning, I know, in the next three years, no babies could be born, and it would be nice to, you know, use up this yarn to something what could be used more quicker. Plus, this is not super wash, and for the babies, maybe it's not the best thing. But of course, for mine, I will. I think I will not care because I started washing uh, my knits by hands, and I understood that it's not that difficult. Especially wool has those antibacterial properties. Uh, they don't. Uh, they don't start smelling that quickly, so you don't need to wash them really often. Of course, the babies, well, it will be often. <laughs> but yeah, so I decided that this won't be a scarf, <laughs> this is a headband. And the idea was to make a headband, uh, then um, maybe, this is, I think, 450 grams, 175 meters, I think. Yes, one hundred around 175 meters. Um, a length yarn and it's, it should be enough maybe not we will see but yeah so first i decided to knit a headband and then tried to knit two to, uh, fingerless gloves i think i was inspired by penrose knits she, uh, she knitted a lot of petite knits uh, oh penny gloves i think uh i think um mm, well up knits uh, made a, a free uh, you YouTube tutorial how to make, you know, fingerless gloves, and I already knitted uh, gloves and fingerless gloves in my life, so I'm not gonna have to buy any pattern, I think it will be a simple stockness stitch, I know how I'm doing, I'm, <laughs> yeah, so I will improvise and knit uh, fingerless gloves, and then maybe I will knit something similar to saw the scarf, uh, I really like that uh, shape where you can tie in and the ends are a little bit smaller than the grow up, and I don't know, if the all length and like soft scarf will feel growing or I just you know reach the the width I want and then we'll continue knitting. I think it's so simple. I'm not gonna buy it a pattern. I may use Carter stitch as a set, but I just improvise my way. Uh, I yeah about buying patterns. I'm thinking of buying patterns when I need help with the construction, with the stitch pattern, <laughs> I, when looking into the picture, I have no idea how to knit. Uh, but if it is something similar, like garter stitch uh, scarf, I will improvise myself and I I will say, you know, what it was inspired by. So if other people want to knit something similar and then you want the pattern, they can, you know, use it. I will not create a pattern or try to explain how I knit it up, uh, but I, fe I feel free just to improvise. And I marked a few patterns I really want to buy because they are so spectacular and I, <laughs> I don't think that without uh, instructions I could knit something similar. So I'm really excited to buy some patterns in the future, but for now, for this <laughs> scrappy project, I'm gonna improvise. 
Oh, so yeah, so the idea was to film a little vlog for, you know, knitting this headband, and do maybe with those fingerless gloves, and then starting a small scarf. But then I just said that I, it would take more than a week or 10 days I was really expecting. I was way too optimistic <laughs> when starting and I just can share my ideas and works in my podcast and think other ideas what I can do <laughs> in the meantime. Uh, because I really want to upload a video every two weeks. Uh, but every two weeks I don't think that sometimes I have what to share too much. I'm not the fastest knitter and sometimes I select <laughs> things to knit uh, which is are uh, more label intense and uh, you know from chunky yarn you can do maybe four knits in one or whatever but the finger fingering weight yarn no I cannot and it's okay. So hopefully someone will also <laughs> enjoy you know slow paced and uh, won't mind that I upload maybe more of that knitting related videos uh, but I am thinking maybe try to add something like me made like sewing or sewing for example knitting bag I have idea because for now I'm using a box or just leaving uh, this project was just laying around uh, so yeah like that or I'll to add like a styling video. I also thinking about maybe knit and chat, so we'll see what I will do or <laughs> I won't. Uh, but yeah, if you have ideas or to see more from me, uh, let me know. Okay, this is a familiar uh, Istex 20 years anniversary sweater, <laughs> the name I'm always forgetting and then mix up all the letters by Vedis, what is Vedis uh, Jan Stodir. So it is my most Icelandic sweater. Uh, this summer we visited Iceland, so I bought this yarn in Iceland, and this is my Icelandic, uh, you know, designer pattern with a sliding thing. But yeah, so I done both sleeves. I have body. I joined. And now I have to start color work. But this morning I was way too many debates. You know how with color distribution. Uh, no, do I wanna where I want to have this dark brown color where I want to have this almost not contrasting color uh, but yeah I have using uh, using uh, I'm using let Lopi yarn 100% wool uh, it is really rustic but when I'm knitting I'm just I can I don't know I feel like I can still wear it even if it is scratchy and I heard that knitters sometimes get used to, you know, scratch your yarn and can wear it when nobody else would wear. But this yarn is more supposed to be used for maybe outer sweaters. Uh, because, you know, Iceland, Norway, it's really cold and you just don't put one ink on your body, you layer things. And so if it would be too scratchy, I thought that buying dark brown turtleneck would really, you know, long sleeve, would be a really nice addition to, you know, add some layer. But as I said, I feel like I may be okay with wearing this. And one knitting podcaster said that this yarn is her favorite and that it gets softer by wear because it gets maybe oils a little bit from the skin. And this is you know, natural fiber wool, it just reacts you know, and softens it up after you know, washing with maybe wool detergent or whatever, softener. And then you know, by wear it becomes softer and softer and less scratchy. So we will see. And I bought an excellent three colors. I bought uh, the slightest, it is straw color, uh, or you can find <laughs> color numbers <laughs> on my Ravelry page. Then it is a little bit darker, this one is a little bit darker, is uh, barley color, and the dark brown is chocolate color. Uh, but since I bought it this yarn before selecting the pattern, I just bought a uh, just one ball of each contrasting color and a lot of main color and apparently I bought a little bit too much. I bought 11 balls of this lighter yarn uh, but uh, the pattern says that I will need eight and I bought uh, one ball of each contrasting color and the pattern says that it should be two free balls. So most likely I will need to make an order <laughs> to finish up uh, the sweater and I don't care about color the dialogues since it will be color works so I think it will be less noticeable if you know soft changes and 
it could look okay. In some variations uh, it has way more colors <laughs> the sweater. So I am not afraid of uh, different dye lots, but I really don't want to order for yarn because I know that if I will uh, make an order for three more balls of yarn, I will really want to buy something else if I'm paying for shipping. And I don't have any space in my yarn box. <laughs> it is full and the lid doesn't want to close. Uh, it is an uh, IKEA box uh, without any little clips. So it's just, you know, more decorative box, not those plastic ones where you can snap it. So if that would be the snap it plastic bin, of course it would close because yarn is squishy. Uh, but in this box where there, I keep everything, <laughs> yarn can push up the lid. Uh, but yeah, it is okay. But uh, my goal for this year is not to overflow that box. Uh, so, you know, I use up yarn. This is why I started that scrappy project, because uh, I want to use up my yarn so I would have more space uh, for more yarn in that box. But apparently, yeah, I may run out of space <laughs> now. I, like, I'm running already out of space, and as I said, if I'm ordering more. But yeah, it's time to start color work. I think if I will be a good editor, I will add a picture of how the color work works because this is not showing that much. But yeah, I adore the sweater. But yesterday I tried it on when I connected everything. Oh, and my change is that, okay, for adult sweater, I chose uh, the kids version because I really enjoyed this flower motif. And uh, I just finished adding some German shirt rows. This is my first time adding them to my project. Uh, but I decided that I want to add this detail because it doesn't have any shaping. So I decided that uh, it would be more comfortable maybe. Um, but most likely it has really quite loose uh, neckline. So it would build still, still comfortable. But I decided that I want sided German shirt rows. This is my markers where I was adding them or switching them around. So now I have to start knitting, uh, knitting color work. And yeah, this morning I was wasting way too much time deciding which color combination I want to use for or the top pattern, which one I want to be dark brown and which one I want to be barley color. Oh, but yeah, so I guess I will be in the middle of the color work and I will run out with yarn and then I will order because I don't want to order yarn before and of the color work because if I in the middle of the color work I can predict more maybe how much yarn I still need uh, than just ordering uh, blindly yarn uh, but of course that I will have to wait and then I will have to start something else uh, but yeah yesterday I tried it on and uh, it's quite stiff, not flowy fabric, so I felt like my belly is, was showing a little bit too much and I have some insecurities around my body. And uh, this light color and this shaping that it cinches up below belly, I may try to stretch it out or it may give me a complex a little bit, so that was downside from yesterday. But let me finish the sweater, let me block it, we will see how it wears, how it feels it. Uh, but yeah, that gives me a little bit scare of this beautiful sandy color, because I really loved it. But it is like it is. And the next thing I want to talk about, uh, last time it was not enough time, the yarn I brought from Lafenia. It is a yarn my aunt bought, and she made some shawls, uh, knitted or crocheted, I don't remember. And then she decided that she doesn't need it, she does, it was not that her cup of tea, so she just gave it away to me. And now I am planning to use it, uh, not really soonish, because I still don't know what to do. Should I knit a sweater or a cardigan, you know, pullover <laughs> or cardigan? Uh, but I'm happy uh, to have it, and in the future I will totally use it up. Uh, it is uh, Yarn Art uh, Angora Deluxe, it is 70% uh, mohair, 30% acrylic, it uh, is, uh, yeah, is it mohair, but it is like, you know, like normal fingering weight yarn, it's not just like, it's a little bit thicker, not lace weight maybe, at least it looks like. 
Uh, so it says that you're using three millimeter needles, 26 stitches should be, yes, yeah, super fine uh, category. <laughs> Uh, and yes, one of 100 grams, so 520 meters. So yeah, 1,000 meters, and even here I think could be one more, maybe more. I don't know. I will wait it, and I can do some color work because this is uh, the same uh, yarn, just different color. Uh, so yeah, it will be really nice. But I will decide cardigan or pullover after I will knit my first cardigan. I bought yarn for that already black one yeah and we'll see what i want to do with this one this thing i want to talk with you about is my a little bit the needle organization because last time i bought but i didn't show my shortest needle set so apparently it was this denim knit pro uh, thingy and actually i decided that it is enough to me have my shortest here you know just two small wires and all the needles for it. I t test the, tested them out knitting uh, my sliding sweater, so they work fine. <laughs> I'm quite happy. I was really surprised that since it's a different maker, Knit Pro, and uh, my other needle, normal, this set I made. <laughs> I bought them one by one by sizes I wanted, so, so I make it, I think, from three to five millimeters my own set. Uh, they have the same screws, so I was able to mix and match, for example, to put uh, these shorties on, uh, on all these <laughs> cables, and then I was able to switch you know, the shorty to the longer uh, needle when needed, so that was really nice thing, and I was really happy that, you know, uh, unity and our division, so you can mix and match, and of course, if you like, li like someone <laughs> more, you can you know, switch it up maybe to that uh, maker. It's like, you know, phone chargers. I really enjoy that uh, European Union passed the law that all phone, um, I think in the future, maybe computer chargers should be have the exactly same port, because how many wires, different chargers I should have at <laughs> home? Of course, I have one phone, but then, you know, if your family members have the same charger, it is way easier if you forgot your charger to, you know, get a charger. So yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, so the knitting needles, uh, at least those two, this is Drops. One and this is Knit Pro. They have the same screws and I'm really happy about it. Uh, couldn't be the better. But yeah, it came also in this pouch. So now I'm using this pouch, smaller place, to put all these uh, notches, you know, like uh, uh, tighteners and end, uh, and the ends. So if you want to hold the stitches on the cable or you want to knit flat, but if I knit flat, I just add. I was so <laughs> it on the round. Yeah, I, since I was uh, tying it on now, I connected all my cables onto this one, <laughs> one long needle, uh, just so I would be able to, you know, check my sweater. Uh, it is uncomfortable to knit on such a long uh, needle set, as you noticed uh, when I'm knitting. I don't mind to have it uh, too small uh, cable length, because I think it's way easier, because you don't need to move stitches that much because they just move automatically <laughs> because they really scrunch up and uh, maybe this is a little bit too much but uh, it's better than just fitting in uh, at least for me and my preferences and here i keep in that bigger pouch i decided to keep uh, now i know all the in the bag still those notches i have because i have more uh, those cable connectors and usually I decided to put my cables also in but now they are connected so they're not in here so you know have some a little bit organization around it uh, so yeah I'm happy to have my needle shorties I have more you know organized maybe those notches thing and then this is all other notches bag so I also hold here my interchangeables uh, yeah you using these ones so other interchangeables I have here, I have scissors, I really want to buy another pair of scissors because sometimes now when I want to paint and I want to cut uh, those uh, tapes you know, so to secure the edges, I have to go and find my knitting bag because my you know, paper or 
tape scissors <laughs> are not in place so maybe I will buy you know those small because for you they are you just need those small beautiful scissors so I think I will buy them then I have uh, this uh, semi short e needle set I was trying them out they are 40 centimeters and I think those are maybe 20 something centimeters so those are actually short enough and those were not short enough so I still was not able to knit uh, a sleeve, at least the smallest parts. So yeah, I have one of them for now and we'll see if I'm using, I can buy more. But actually, uh, this is maybe <laughs> a precious mistake. Then I have uh, not uh, changeable circular needles, three millimeters, and I have my knit now on four millimeters. And uh, I have here also, you know, checker which size of the needles, or like I can have a small ruler with gauge check. So this is also really useful. I have those small bobby pins I'm using instead of stitch, stitch mark, not bobby pins. I don't know what this, how this is called. But yeah, small pins. I can use as uh, stitch markers, they are movable, <laughs> easy and yeah so i just use them and i put it i think this was from some sauce <laughs> from the restaurant i just wash it out and reuse it to hold them up and this is my meter i also thinking to buy a new meter because it is so annoying to re uh, to wrap it back again so what those were automatic ones when you stretch out as you want and then choo, and they do it for you so the, those things also I may buy it in the future, you know, which is but if I have what is, you know, usable, I can use it. And the last things in my, like, needle, you know, notches uh, bag for knitting is uh, cable needles. I bought them. I didn't use them because I bought them after the switch. <laughs> I didn't need the needles afterwards. Uh, but yeah, I want to knit it and they just so, so you know, nice. And I'm so excited about knitting needles, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, I got those and I have a hook because sometimes, I don't know, you drop a stitch or it is, at least when I was knitting this one, once I forgot where this uh, seed stitch starts or ends and you need to, you know, like re-knit a few lines back, the seam stitch, you know, just drop and, you know, put it, take it in correct way. So yeah, it's really useful, or I use a uh, hook usually to uh, weave, weave in ends, uh, I like it. Oh yes, and my needle is next to my sew, uh, sewing uh, stuff. And I also have some DPNs I also use, uh, putting in different place. I don't need them that often, but that reminded me to talk about new... Uh, so yeah, everything falls into here just oh, oh. so yeah. more clean way and i can transport and take my needles uh, where i need but what i wanted also talk and i forgot when i was knitting this one yesterday first time i grafted i think it is called grafting <laughs> the armpit because it's bottom up and I really love how it looks like. I cannot see where you know, it starts and ends. Okay, I, I think I can, but I don't care about it. It's such a beautiful thing. And this pattern doesn't say how to do it, but since they give you the right uh, name for this technique, it wasn't that difficult. I forgot. <laughs> I thought that I was actually losing stitches. Uh, so yeah. It was not really difficult to Google it and then one blog post. It wasn't the best, but it also was you know, good enough. So it was easy, you know, to learn. Uh, so I learned it and I think this this is perfection. <laughs> because the last the bottom up, uh, the, the top I knitted, I bind off as it was written in the pattern and then I tried to sew it and then it was not, it doesn't look elegant. And then when I found out this grafting technique, I decided that maybe bottom up setters doesn't have problems. But again, another problem with bottom up setters on this sweater was uh, that I have no idea how long the sleeves should be because I have no idea how deep uh, the armpit will be, how far away from the armpit. Because 
because for the pictures it looks like it will be a little bit lower. It has enough space in those all the sweaters. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I think, so I was thinking, you know, a few centimeters so it could be longer, shorter. It's a little bit more difficult to figure out exact same length when you don't know how deep the armpit will be. So yeah, at least in my mind. So I think I needed a little bit longer sleep than it is suggested in the pattern. I think for my size it was 48 centimeters and I may knitted it in 49 or 50. Now I don't remember exactly. And I've, uh, same for the body. I needed a few centimeters longer or one centimeter. Uh, just, yeah, it's just that extra. After this sweater, <laughs> I really wanted extra uh, length so it wouldn't be too short. But actually I don't want also sweaters to be too long. That would be also good sweater length uh, for you know, dishwashing or something. Because I don't like too long either. So that is really difficult when you don't want to be too small, but you don't like too long either. So <sighs> you just wish for the best. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching it. And I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>